Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous. It keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Reverend Dr. David Binden on the Good Life Devotion brought to you by the Mega Light Mission, the church for this generation. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a wonderful morning. What an amazing opportunity for us to connect again on this most glorious program of the Gula Devotion. Where it is known that you receive nothing but the truth of God's word. This is why we believe that everyone in Ghana should join hands to make the Gula Devotion the, the nation's devotion because that is what it is. Bringing you truth that will usher you to the good life exhibition. By the grace of God, he has tutored us in his word. And given us the opportunity to come your way. That's why we're making this word available on many platforms. What I'm sharing with you today, for instance, coming to you from this lab transforming devotional. You need to get this devotional. It's called Emancipator. Call us and get a copy. Or go to our website and download a free copy. If you speak French, we have Emancipator in French also. You see. Then... Also, go to our YouTube channel and subscribe to that YouTube channel. A lot of messages are on it. Then go to our Facebook, Pegula Devotion, the Rebellion Life, and like the pages so that you keep yourself in the environment of the truth of God's word. I get in that. So if you are ready for today, then let's pray as we begin for today. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we thank you for a wonderful morning. We are so grateful for the truth of your word. Thank you for what the Holy Spirit is doing in our hearts, in our families, in our businesses, in our ministries, in our bodies. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son. Uh, and live in your spirit to your work on earth is done. Thank you, Father. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your son. And live in your spirit to your work of earth is done. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I communicate life to you. I command that pain in the tongue to be healed. I command that joint ache to disappear. I declare stability in your walk with God. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Wow. It's been an amazing journey on this week's episodes of the Good Life Devotion. We've looked at the subject of the promised land. Having understood that Canaan it's not the actual promised land. It was a figure. We want to understand that the real promised land is Zion. We understood why Abraham 
the basis upon which Abraham and his people were expecting a heavenly country. And we understood that if you are in Christ, then you are in Zion. And one feature of being in Zion is that in Zion you have possessions. Zion is not a place where you come and then there's nothing for you. And you now have to be praying and begging God to do something new for you. The moment you step in Zion, you step into an inexhaustible quantum of resources that are meant to make you exhibit the fullness of the divine life in your life. So today, we'll try to see how we are round up on this series as we look at this topic. In Zion, just possess your possessions. Now that you are in Zion, we understood that being in Zion is being in Christ. We understood that being in Zion, you have possessions. So now that you are in Zion, just possess your possessions. So when you are in Zion, you just possess your possessions. That's all you need to do. Because the possessions are already yours. And we, may, we took time to make that clear to you in the past episode. That if you are in Christ, everything pertaining to life and godliness is yours. You can name it. There is nothing that you are thinking about that is too beautiful for you. There's nothing. You cannot think of something that is too good for you. What God has for you is, is more precious and better than what you could ever imagine. There's no amount of uh, goodness in life that you are thinking about that is too good for you. In Zion, everything is there. Hallelujah. So, let's go. We are using Obadiah verse, chapter 1 verse 17 again as a main scripture for today. As we talk about the fact that in Zion, just possess your possessions. Verse 17 of Obadiah chapter 1 says that, But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Now we explain to you what it means that there shall be deliverance in Zion, and what it means that there will be holiness in Zion, and what it means that uh, they have possessions in Zion. Let me just take time and read to you what that we have in the man's prayer today. It says, do you remember we said Cana was a type of Zion? And this was to show us how the life in Zion will be. And remember, I gave you certain features of Cana. And I said that the reason why God chose Cana as an appropriate allegory God chose Canaan as an appropriate similitude or figure was because there were certain features of Canaan that are similar to the features of the promised land, which we now know to be Zion. You see? So those features were there. And if you understood them in the figure, then you can understand what they are also in Zion. Now, Canaan was already... So I, I, do you remember the features? Maybe let's go over them again. Number one. We said that it was a land that from Exodus chapter 3, verse 8. It was a land that was good and large. Number two, we said it was a land that was filled with milk and honey. Number three, we said it was a land that was already inhabited by people like Canaanites, Jebusites, and Amalekites, and Hittites, and all those people. Then we learned about a fourth feature in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1 to 3 that there were foundations or there were principles or divine instructions. That anybody who will enjoy life to the maximum in Zion or in that land that was flowing with milk and honey wants to enjoy life to the maximum. Such a person needed to live by those status, those instructions. So now we are in Zion. These are the features of Zion. And that was why God used Canaan as an allegory of Zion. So the man's better say that Canaan was already inhabited by other people. Yet it was divinely designated to the children of Israel. Did you see that? So can you imagine? The children of Israel are going to a land, and the land is not empty. There were Canaanites, Amalekites, there were Jebusites, there were Hittites and Hevites. And these people were in the land, and God says, This land is yours. 
You see, what is this feature in Zion? Let's read. The Magdalene says that to enjoy that good land flowing with milk and honey, they had to conquer the Canaanites. So they went there. The land was flowing with milk and honey. The land was good and large. But on that same land where the Canaanites, the Jebusites, we can call all of them the people of Canaan. So for them to be able to enjoy the milk and honey and the good land, they needed to conquer the people who already existed on, existing on the land. And that process of taking over what the Lord had given to them, which was already being occupied by somebody else, is what we call possessing their possessions. Are you following? Now, we made it clear to you that the earthly portion of heaven is Zion. So when we say Zion, there is a big spiritual country called heaven. At one portion of it, as we speak right now, Jesus Christ and Papa God, the Holy Spirit, that's where the Godhead with all, with all the angelic hosts, that's where the Papa God is now. But there is another portion of heaven which is on this earth. And that is where all Christians are, except those who have transited to be in the other side, which is the, the other part of heaven. So for all of us who are alive now on earth as the body of Christ, we don't belong on the earth. We are actually living on the portion of heaven that is called Zion. But that is the portion of heaven that is on earth. Are you getting this? Good. Now, this Zion is on earth. And you know that the earth was already inhabited by the devil. You see, before Jesus Christ came. The whole world was under the governance of the devil. The Bible calls him the God of this world. So before any of us came into Zion through Jesus, the devil was on the earth. And he had authority over the northern pole to the southern pole, the eastern border to the western border of the earth because Adam through disobedience had already yielded the authority of the earth to the devil. So when Jesus Christ came to the earth, the devil was tempting him and he made an important statement in Luke chapter 4 verse 6. And when he made that statement, Jesus did not argue with him. It means that Jesus said what he was saying was the right thing. He told Jesus that, listen, he took Jesus to the top of the mountain and said, listen, boy, if you will bow before me, I will give you. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a, in, in a, in a moment. I said, listen, if you bow, just bow before me, I'm going to give you the glory, all these kingdoms and their glory because it was given to me. He didn't say because I created this. Because it was given to me. It is Adam who gave it to him when he obeyed him. First Corinthians chapter 6 tells us, I mean, Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 6 tells us that if you yield yourself to somebody, then you become the person's slave. If you obey somebody's instruction, you become the person's slave. So when Adam obeyed the instruction of the devil, he became a slave to the devil. And the devil took over the earth and began to dictate how things would go. That is how he used human beings to establish all the ungodly systems that are in this world. And because he is the author of, of, of the ungodly systems, that is why in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4, God calls him, or the, the scriptures call him the God of this, this world. Not because he created it, but when Adam gave him that authority, he took over and he began to devise and orchestrate the systems that are governing the world. Are you following? So this devil, with all his demons of various kinds and evil spirits, constitute a group of adversary, a, 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 a team of beings that are opposed to the enjoyment of the good life in Zion, the portion of heaven on this earth. And that is the feature of Canaan, that is also of Zion, that God used Canaan as, a, as an allegory. That was one of the features. Are you following this? So what this means is that though peace is yours, though prosperity is yours, though success is yours, though joy is yours, and all these things are part of your life in Christ, as long as you are walking on this part of heaven, which is Zion, which is on this earth, 
The devil who is still around on this earth will try to kind of see if he can cheat you out. Because he was already here. And you will need to put him where he belongs. So that you can lay hold on that which is yours. That is what we mean by just possess your possessions. God is not now trying to give you peace. It is not now that God is trying to prosper you. It's not now that God is trying to heal you. You are already healed. But the devil throws that and comes around to make you look as though you are still sick. What do you do? You possess your possessions. Just take a hold of your health. Take a hold of your, 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 your progress. Take a hold of your liberty. Because these things are already yours. I get that. So now, when you choose to express what is yours on the earth, then it means that you have possessed your possession. There are some Christians, they have not chosen to live in peace. They have not determined to walk in prosperity. They have not determined to live in health. They have not determined to live victoriously. And that means that though they have possessions, they, are, they, are not, they have not, they've not possessed the possessions. But when you make your mind up that, look, everything that is mine in Zion, I'm going to discover the principles by this word. And therefore, take a hold of my peace. Then, you are now possessing your possessions. We're talking about the fact that in Zion, just possess your possessions. Hallelujah. You are watching the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bindon, brought to you by the Megalite Mission. This devotion comes to you from the daily devotional called The Emancipator. The Emancipator is a devotional that brings you truth that will usher you into the good life experience. Call 0269 to subscribe to your monthly copies. You can also visit our website at www.megalightmission.com for free downloads of The Emancipator. Are you so burdened with sin consciousness that you are wondering whether you can fully please God? Is there a particular act of sin in your life that you seem not to be able to overcome? Do you seek to have a definite understanding of your righteousness in Christ and forever live as a master of a sin? Good news! Dr. David Bindon's best-selling book, Master of a Sin, is a must read. Call the following numbers now for your copies. 264 327106 or 0541097651. Praise the Lord. Wow, so this is so important. Now, when we say the devil was already here, just like the Canaanites were there, if you remember, in the Old Testament or in Canaan, the Israelites had to fight physically with the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Jebusites to take over the land and the land that was flowing with milk and honey, of course. But in our case, we are not supposed to fight Satan like the Israelites did to the Canaanites. All we need to do is to just resist the devil in God's word and he will flee. If you read James chapter 4 verse 7, Look at what he said. James chapter 4 verse 7 says something very interesting. I said James 4, right? Okay. James chapter 4 verse 7. It says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You see? So there are two parts of this verse. Submit yourselves to God, resist the devil and he will flee. What does it mean by submit yourself to God? That was what Moses meant in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. He said, if you go into that land, I'm going to give you certain instructions that you live by. These are the foundations of Zion. So when he says submit yourself to God, it means that bring yourself into conformity to his word. How has God prescribed that you live in Zion? For instance, for instance we are told that when you are in Zion, sin shall no more have dominion to you. Over you. Now, if you're a Christian and you continue to live in sin, you can't res resist even the mosquito that the devil sends to you. 
When the devil sends one mosquito, it will terrorize your life. But if you live by the principles that you take that word, sin shall not have dominion over me, and you are walking in righteousness, let the devil himself come with horns and eyes and tails. With one word, you cast him out. What reason why a lot of Christians like to run for deliverance here and there is because they are living in sin. So they don't even have, they can't even exercise authority over headache. They can't exercise authority over even a dream. A little dream that they have, they are calling everybody for interpretation. They say they are spiritually married. Why? You mean you are walking, living in righteousness and a demon came to you? No. But if you are flirting all around, then it's not every human being that is a human being. Some human, just like the Holy Ghost has filled us and is using us. The devil has also filled people. So you think you have slept with a man, but you've just exchanged demons into your, into your life. Then you say you are spiritually married. How did they get into you? If you are walking in righteousness, how will a demon marry you? You are going into a business, and you are doing the business by the standards of the world. You are cutting out of corners, not doing the things rightly. And then demons get access to your business. Then you are complaining that you need deliverance. If you did that business by the principle of the spirit, how could a demon get into you that you need deliverance? You see, and it is because in such a case, you have not submitted yourself to the word of God. So you can't resist the devil. So if you see a, a Christian saying, things are not going on well, I don't know why, and I need deliverance, right. he's not submitting to the word of God. He says, submit yourself to God, and you resist the devil, and he will do what? He will flee. So, that's what it means to possess your possessions. Just resist the devil. God created the devil, and he knows that there is something in the devil that when you resist him, he'll flee. So just take that word, resist him. When he comes with sickness, resist him. He comes with evil thoughts, resist him. When he comes with discouragement, resist him. When he comes with fear, resist him. And don't, if you continue to do this, you are possessing your possessions because peace is yours, victory is yours. Anything that tries to tell you that you cannot live in victory, you must resist it in the word of God. Hallelujah. In fact, there are other features of Zion that I think are, 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 which, uh, uh, are the same as the features of Canaan. For instance, you look at when you say the land is good and large. I think I told you. That means that the place is beautiful and um, the land is uh, the best land. It is a place where you be at ease and it gets, it's a land where there's so much room. That is confirmed in Ephesians 1 verse 3. It says you are blessed with all spiritual blessings. What is this kind of place? Where you get to that every blessing you ever require is there. He said that in, in 2 Peter 1 3, everything pertaining to life and godliness, that's a life of ease. It's a large life, you can't exhaust it. Everything is yours. That's Zion. Then he said that it's a land where there are already enemies. I talked to you about that. The devil is here before you got born again. You need to do what? Resist him, clear him off, and take the hold of your prosperity, your health. Your victory and everything. Then, it says that it's a land that there are foundations to act on. Again, in the kingdom of God, we have the word of God. The word of his grace. When you are born again, you are a product of grace. The law is not what you need. If you are reading the law, you are not reading the, the, the perfect law of liberty. You should study and live by the word of grace. When we say you are reading the law, what we are, we are saying is that we are not saying that don't read the part of the book, that, the Bible that is law. But if you are studying the word and your perspective is to get the law out of it, you have a veil. Bible said that even today when Moses is read, if you are studying the Bible with the perspective of the law, you can't get an inheritance because that's not the foundation of the kingdom. If you go to Acts chapter 20, verse 32, look at this one. Acts chapter 20. Verse 32 says something very powerful. It says that, uh, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. You already have this inheritance in Zion. But it says that it is the word of his grace which will build you and deliver to you when he says will give you the correct rendering there means that it, it will deliver the inheritance to you. That means that the word of grace, the principles of the kingdom, 
is what will make you walk in your inheritance. So you're looking for peace everywhere. There's no peace anywhere. There is peace in the world. These are the foundations. Abraham says, I'm looking for a city with foundations. The word of God, the principles of the word in line with the, the message of grace. The word of grace. These are the foundations upon which Zion is built. Hallelujah. So do you now understand why it was appropriate for God to choose uh, uh, Canaan as a, a similitude, a figure, or an allegory of Zion? In Canaan, there was a large land, a good one. That means everything was there. In Christ, all things pertaining to life and godliness, they are there. In Canaan, there were enemies who were already dead that need to be dispossessed. In Christ, you are still living on earth. That's in Zion. You are still living on earth. And there's the devil here who has kind of put a system, but you need to dispossess him. And you do that by resisting him through the word of God, not fighting him with guns and fighting battles in prayer. Then, in Zion, there are principles that when you act on, you, de- you, you take delivery of this great inheritance. These principles are out of the word of God's grace. What's the word of his grace? This is the word that tells you who you are in Christ, what Christ has done for you, and what you can do in Christ. So important. It's much of the summary of who you are in Christ, the, the new creation. If you understand who you are in Christ, you'll be amazed. And this is why we bring you the new creation conference every year. This year, you can't miss the new creation conference in November. When the time gets near, we'll remind you. And wherever you are in any country, you must fly to Ghana for the new creation conference. For your life will never be the same again. Before we run out today, make this confession after me. It says, Devil, no matter what you are doing around me, I refuse to be poor. I refuse to be barren. I refuse to be defeated. And I refuse to be confused. Say, I choose to fully express my joy, to fully express my prosperity, to fully express my success, to fully express my health, to fully express my glory, all in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow. If you are born again already, keep on celebrating God for these things that you've learned this week. If you have not yet received Christ, this is an amazing thing. I want you to receive Jesus Christ today. Why must you receive Jesus? There's the life of God you must have that will make you a child of God. That life is in Jesus. If you have Jesus, you have the life of God and you're a child of God. If you don't have Jesus and you don't have the life of God and you're not a child of God, and when you remain that way and die, you are going to go into hell. But don't go to hell after watching me today. How do you receive Jesus? Believe that Jesus came into this world as a son of God. He lived and died for the sins of mankind and he was raised from the dead. As a proof that when you believe in him, your sins will be forgiven and you become a child of God. If you believe that, then join me to make this confession and you will receive Jesus in your heart. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. With all my heart, I believe that you were raised from the dead. Jesus, I confess you now as Lord over my life. Hallelujah. Wow, that's been an amazing week. This is a weekend. What are you going to be doing over this weekend? If you are sitting at home without a church, I recommend a mega admission to you. Call us and get to know the nearest branch so that you'll be in church this Sunday. Hallelujah. Remember, I'm going to come your way again next week from Monday to Friday on this channel at the same time. Also on Vision 103.5 FM every Monday to Friday at 1.30 to 2 p.m. If you are not in Accra, you can listen on Vision 1 FM online. Always, always remember that in Christ, life is good. So till I meet you, continue to bask in this good life. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching today's episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Binden, brought to you by the Mega Life Mission, the church for this generation. To fellowship with any of our branches near you, call 0269-720-730. So we come your way same time with the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Binden. Life is good. Enjoy. Enjoy.